Congregation, put your hands together and give God some praise. This is another day that the Lord hath made. We will. I didn't say we might. I said we will. It's not a possibility, but we will rejoice and be glad. <laughs> I'm going to repeat what David said. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of glad to be back off vacation. I'm glad that the week is getting started on Lord's Day Sunday morning. We come to have church. If you're with us at home on Facebook, would you hit your share buttons? Because you ought to be ready to have church as well. We are the New Calvary Baptist Church. I am Pastor Vincent Oliver, and we come to praise the Lord. Put those blessed hands together and give God some praise. We've got a worship leader in the person of Reverend Dr. Steve Wright. He's coming now to lead us in worship. Praise team, y'all get ready. Oh, come on now. Let's, let's, let's not stop praising him now. Pastor already echoed. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I was excited about coming into the house today. I've been away. I've been through a lot of things, but I come out today to worship him in spirit and in truth. Are y'all going to pray with me? Are y'all going to worship him today? Didn't he keep us? Hallelujah. He, he brought us through the storm this week. I thought the house was coming down. We were in the basement three times, but when it was all said and done, here we are still standing. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. Let's give God some praise. Come on, praise team. Give us a selection. As the praise team gets ready, I would ask Reverend Walter Ayers uh, to ready himself for prayer and Reverend Ella Priest to ready yourself for scripture in that order. God bless. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is another first Sunday that we are here. If you can, I ask that you stand and help me sing this song. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the I nations. I said the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the I nations. I said the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation and his glory above the nation give God the highest hey. praise acknowledging him always hey. and all the people say holly 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 say holly 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 hallelujah the Lord is high above the heavens the Lord is high above the heavens And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging him always. And all the people say, Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Oh, Halle. Halle. Praise the Lord, say yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And if you love to praise the Lord, say yeah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! 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 H
to praise the Lord. Sing it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 you can please stand and reference the word of God. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yes, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Yes, Be yes. thankful unto him and bless his name. Yes, yes. This is why. For the Lord is good. Yes, yes. His mercy is everlasting. Yes, yes. And his truth endureth to yes. all generation. Yes. Thus end the reading of God's holy word. Yes. And we pray that his word will continue to move in those that heard the word and those that are doers of his Amen. holy word. Amen. The Bible says, except the Lord build the house, they labor that labor in vain. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning for you have brought us through another period and another time as we go through this great purging. We know, Lord, that you have your hands on us. You know, Lord, that we strive to keep a made-up mind during times like these. Now, Lord, we ask this morning that thou will look down upon us once again. Search us and know us. If there be any wicked thing within us, O God, my Father, as we send praises up to you, Remove them as far as the east is from the west, O oh God, that you might get the glory, O oh God, my Father, that so righteously do you. We thank you, Lord, for the covering of our family. We thank you for the covering of our church. We thank you for the covering of our pastor and his family. We thank you, Lord, for we know that thou art our keeper. And we're so grateful. Find anything that's not Christ-like in the atmosphere right now, oh God, my Father, that you might get the glory out of all eyes. I'm grateful, Lord. Feel not good in my body, but my spirit, oh God, is revving over and over and over right now. Get your glory. Cover us with the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Oh, God, let this sermon go out amongst the airways, oh, God, that somebody catch on fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. We want to thank the praise team for that selection. We thank Reverend Ella Priest for that scripture and Reverend Walter Ayers for that prayer. It's instruction time now. And those of you that are watching at home on Facebook, if you would refer to the newsletter on your screen right now, you will see the new Calvary. Um, you will see the website. You will see the YouTube instructions. For the month of September, we're celebrating um, three birthdays, actually four. On the 6th of September, which was what, yesterday? Tomorrow? Michelle Jones. Amen. Reverend Michelle Jones, Minister Jones. Listen, Dwayne Wright on the 7th. Now, can I pause right here for a minute? See, young folk, they, they don't do like we did. We do a birthday and then we move on. They do weeks, months. So Dwayne been calling the house every day talking about this is day three of my birthday. What's up? So we just sent him some, some, some memes and we sent him some GIFs and all of that stuff to make him happy. But it is actually the seventh. So God bless you, Brother Dwayne. We have uh, on the 11th, Deacon Dwight Fryer and Dr. Sheila Nichols also on the 11th. Let's give all of our birthdays for September a hand praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is now offering time. It is offering time. Somebody say amen. amen. And on your bulletin, it um, gives you uh, different ways um, to give your tithes and offerings. You can do give a fly, give the fly. You can do cash app. The pounds, I mean the dollar sign, new calf, all caps. Or you can drop off or mail it to the New Calvary Baptist Church, 610 South Hill Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand corrected. Sister Linda's birthday is in September, and she's standing at the door doing what she does, and she said to me, this is not my first rodeo. So we riding with you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we, we bless your name right now, oh God, and we thank you for how you continue to bless us, sometimes even in spite of ourselves. We pray right now, oh God, that you would open up our hearts and our minds and our purses and pocketbooks, that we may give back to you that which you so rightly deserve. And then, Lord God, we stand on your word says, try me, prove me, and see if I won't open a window of heaven and pour out blessings you don't have room enough to, to receive. So we thank you in advance. For the offering we thank you for how you've been able to sustain the church and to do some physical improvements because of thy faithful servants continue to bless us continue to make us givers oh god in christ's name we pray amen and amen so as you've given we're going to ask our praise team. Yeah, let, let pastors come on, coming back for a moment. God bless him as he comes. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Come on now, let the people of God say amen. Uh -huh. 
I want to feel like I'm not the only one ready to have church and to shout about the goodness of God and to let a dying world know that we serve a living Savior, a Savior who has kept us during this time of pandemic, a Savior who has kept us out of the ICU and all of the hospital uh, rooms, a Savior who has kept us safe from all of the dangers that is around us, a Savior who is keeping our minds clear and well prepared to keep our masks on, to keep our distances, and to behave ourselves so that we can do what needs to be done in eradicating this thing called coronavirus and Delta variants. Amen. I thank God for this privilege. I stand first and foremost uh, to thank the New Calvary Baptist Church for allowing my wife and I to get away for the entire month, well, almost the entire month of August. Uh, to get away on vacation. I'm learning, I'm getting older, and I'm disciplining myself. I only preached one time while I was away, and that was for a funeral for a family member of one of our members. So I have not been anywhere working. I've been relaxing, I've been resting, I've been recovering and preparing for uh, the return and the service and the duty that I owe uh, the good and the great people of the New Calvary Baptist Church. So on behalf of my wife and I, let me say thank you uh, for uh, that time of rest and recovery. Uh, it was, I believe, well spent. Y'all had to talk to my wife uh, to get the proof. I believe it was well spent. The other thing that I want to do is let us be reminded that on tomorrow evening, even though tomorrow is Labor Day holiday, uh, we're going to take some time out from 7 to 8 p.m. to have prayer, corporate prayer. This is not a Facebook event. This is a new Calvary Zoom event. Amen. Get your information from whomever so that you can dial in and be a part of the Zoom corporate prayer uh, service at uh, 7 p.m. on tomorrow evening. Come with your prayers, come with your prayer requests, come with your concerns. Uh, our focus will be on uh, Wilmington, Delaware, uh, the victims uh, of the um, storms and the floods, as well as those around the country who have suffered devastation. We don't have to go all the way to Louisiana. We've got victims in Philadelphia and in New Jersey and then right here in Wilmington. And we want to uh, send up prayers on their behalf. Uh, while I am praying uh, and asking for your prayers, would you remember uh, Sister Jackie Kennard uh, Harrison? She is in uh, the uh, Wilmington Hospital. Uh, just call her, don't try to go see her. We did that yesterday and they just turned us around just as nice and told us to go. Only one visitor per day, amen. And her husband was already there. So uh, just keep her in prayer, talk to her by phone and let her know that you're concerned and thinking about her. I know we have other members who are not well. Deacon Adley's not here because uh, he's not feeling well. Keep him in prayer, would you do that? Uh, as well as our mothers, uh, Mother uh, Prophet and uh, Mother Henry, uh, and then Mother McKim is not here. But I can say that Mother Anna Carter is in the house. Amen. Amen. Don't let me forget Mother Jackson. That's right. Uh, Mother Jackson is not here, and we want to uh, make sure that she knows uh, we are praying for her. Uh, now, uh, with regard to uh, the flood victims in Wilmington, I need to say this. Um, I'm no longer the president of IMAX. I'm in general population, so I can't do anything but make suggestions. Uh, and and uh, I have received instructions that IMAC is going to adopt families that have been devastated and displaced in Wilmington uh, because of the flood. So we will be getting some information uh, so that we can adopt a family or two or maybe three. 
Would you prepare yourselves so that you can support that effort in whatever way we need? It may not necessarily be finances as much as other kinds of things that you can purchase on behalf of those who are in trouble. But listen out for instructions in the very near future so that we can do our part and take care of someone who is in need. Uh, the fact of the matter is, biblically speaking, we are indeed our brother's keeper. Am I right about that? I know I am. Uh, so we need to just get ready. Just I know there's a little pocket of money you got squirreled away somewhere just for something like this. So let's be generous. Let's be caring and do what God uh, instructs us to do in the next few days. We can't be waiting around and praying about it. People are in trouble right now as I speak. So we want to do that. I want to thank all that have come to be with us in service today. I want to thank God for those who are faithful supporters of New Calvary on Facebook. Uh, would you would you share this worship service with somebody else? Just hit that share button. And when they get finished with their time of worship at their respective church, they can circle back and catch this service as well. Would you do that? Uh, I know that God is going to bless us. This, this praise team is ready to sing. And I'm ready to preach, so let's give God some glory. Put your hands together. Amen. And thank God. say something pastor says something along the fact of let's let's begin to act like God is is bigger than our problems and our situation and oftentimes when life hit we take the hit and we don't know how to bounce back so we got to find victory knowing that God is greater God is bigger than any problem any situation that we may deal with the bible says that we've been may endure for a night but joy doth cometh in the morning and as i look around and i see it's daylight outside it's time to receive our joy it's time to get our joy back it's time to begin to let the enemy know that he is defeated and he has no victory over our lives amen amen so we got a little song that we're going to sing today Hopefully it bless you. hopefully it blesses someone's spirit, mind and soul on this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, but see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, but see how great, how great. Sing that how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we see how great, how great is our God. How great, how great. 
sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. He's the name. He's the name above all names. He's and he's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great. Is our God? He's the name. He's the name above all names, and He's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. He's the name. How great is our God. Oh, how great, how great our is our God. God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Is our God? Cause I lift my hands. I lift my hands to give you worship. To give you worship. I lift my voice. I lift my voice to give you praise. To give you praise. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna praise you. And I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna praise you. The name. Above all names, he's worthy, and he's worthy of all praise. And my heart will forever, and my heart will sing how great is our God. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody Cause nobody's greater Nobody's greater Nobody's better than you I searched all, all over Couldn't find, couldn't find nobody I high and low I high and low Still couldn't find nobody Nobody's greater Nobody's greater Nobody's greater Nobody's greater Nobody greater than you. Let's take it up one time. His name is above all names. His name is above all names. Worthy of all our praise. Worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. 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 It's above all names. Your name is above all names. Worthy of all our praise. Worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the 
works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Worthy of all our praise. Worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Is our God? Sing with me how great is our God? Oh, we see how great, how great is our God? Can we stay right there? Everybody, lift that up. How great, hope the music. Is our God? I just want to hear the Sing congregation. How, how great, great is our is God. God? How great! Oh, how great! How great! How great! How great is our God? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> That word, that statement doesn't make sense to you until he's proven his greatness in your life. When, when sickness would not let go of your body, but God proved his greatness in healing you. When your finances, I need a little more volume here. When your finances uh, seem to be at a dead end and God uh, proved his greatness in the way that he brought you out we serve a God who is great amen whether whether we declare it or not the God we serve is great that's a fact you, you don't have to debate it you don't have to worry whether people believe it God is great and the Bible says he is greatly to be praised. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we, give, we give honor to the, to the wrong people for their greatness. We give honor to athletes and actors and singers because of the greatness of their gift. But there is only one who is great all by himself. He is the embodiment of greatness. And that is the Lord our God Almighty. Amen. And we honor him today. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Yes. Yes. Father, this prayer is spoken on behalf of your people. Yes. People who need you desperately in these last and evil days. Oh, yes. Yes. We pray, Lord, because our hearts have been overwhelmed with a calamity with weather and environmental issues. Uh, we're overwhelmed with violence and uh, danger on the streets. And then, Lord, our, our hearts and minds are fatigued because of sickness and health and diseases that have overtaken this world. Not only the world, Lord, but it seems to have overtaken the minds of those who don't think clearly. Those who refuse to accept science and the wisdom of masks and vaccines. We can't criticize, Lord, but we turn it over to you. 
Would you fix, Lord, that which is out of order? Hospital beds are filled to overflowing with people who refuse to be vaccinated, refuse to wear masks. And not only they, Lord, but we all suffer the consequences. Our schools, Lord, are in a state of confusion over whether, whether to wear masks or not. And the needs of the children seem to become secondary over politics and self-wisdom. We need you, Lord. Bless the people of God here at New Calvary. Bless those, Lord, that we shall impact by the way we live our lives and serve our God. Let our light so shine that men and women may see our good works. And therefore, and thereby glorify our Father who is in heaven. Take the words that I speak and proclaim. Use them for your glory. Alter lives, change and convict hearts. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. Once again, I'm honored to be in this pulpit. I don't take this uh, gift of this pulpit and my assignment as pastor lightly. I want to take this time to thank all of the clergy and the ministers of the New Calvary family who have served uh, the, the people of New Calvary from this pulpit during my absence. Thank you for preaching a good word, a strong word, uh, an encouraging word for the people of God. And we bless the name of the Lord, as well as thanking the members for uh, sitting under the word and the teaching of those who support this uh, pulpit ministry here at New Calvary Baptist Church. In your Bibles, I want to call your attention to the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 3. If you would permit me, I want to read a few verses of scripture in chapter 3, perhaps starting at verse 18. Verse 18 of Revelation chapter 3, 18 through 20. This is a part of the, one of the letters that Jesus wrote to the pastors of the seven churches in Asia Minor. Starting at verse 18, uh, it reads, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see verse 19 as many as I as many as I love I rebuke and chasten Therefore, uh, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears uh, my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Uh, you may be seated. This is the word of the Lord. The 20th verse of scripture calls our attention. He says to the church, behold I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Uh, it is an understatement for me to stand here today and say 
that we are living in a time of spiritual poverty. Uh, spirituality has become a rarity, even among those of us who profess to be followers of Christ. Uh, much like the uh, people of the church of Laodicea, y'all remember that, that Jesus said they made him sick. So much so that he wanted to spew them out of his mouth. Much like that church. Many of our present day churches have become lukewarm. Lukewarm in our spiritual lives. Y'all think that's a shame, but, but it's the truth. Because uh, spiritual poverty is the result of the lack of prayer. Uh, you, you don't even hear tell of prayer meetings anymore. Uh, people have to be convinced and convicted uh, to go to prayer. Can I stop right here and correct myself? Uh, I said that our corporate prayer started at 7. It starts at 6 on tomorrow evening. Thank you, Reverend Ella, for, for correcting me. I appreciate that. So, so pass the word so that we don't have confusion. It's at 6 o'clock, uh, 6 p.m., and we will go until 7 or until the Lord lets us go. Amen. Spiritual poverty, as I was saying, is the result of little prayer, little or no prayer. It is the result of an indifference to the word of God. There was a time when people just couldn't wait to get to a good revival or to hear if they heard about a good preacher in town. They couldn't wait to get there. And right now there is really an indifference to the word of God. So much so that the preacher really don't have to put too much into preparation because the people don't particularly care what he has to say anyhow. That's where the amen go. <laughs> Our text contains Jesus' prescription for overcoming spiritual poverty. He said, buy from me. In other words, don't, don't get it from fake sources, buy from me, as long as we continue to think that we can meet our needs with the things of the world, we will remain in spiritual poverty. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> uh, he also said, buy gold, not any gold, but gold refined in the fire, that's the testing, don't run up and grab hold of people who haven't withstood the test. All of these new and young preachers and pastors who haven't gone through anything. He says, uh, buy gold refined in the fire. Fire is, is, is synonymous with testing, with proving. You got to be in the fire in order to be proven. He says, do that so that you may be rich. If we receive our riches from the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive his gold, his, his beautifully refined, uh, that has been beautifully refined in the fire, then we can say according to what God has said here in his word, we will be rich. Don't get confused. I'm not talking about possessions and materials, but we will be rich in the sense of our spiritual poverty. Can I get to my message? Y'all yes, uh, say please. <laughs> uh, you can hear it. You can't hear it rather. But there is this constant knocking that goes on in the life of every man and woman. Y'all right. got to remember the text. The, the, the text says, behold, I stand at the door. And knock. There, there is this constant knocking. You may not hear it with your ears, but you can sense it in your spirit. Man's fallen condition prevents him from hearing it clearly. Remember when you were not saved, how crazy you thought? Remember the things that you took for granted as being normal behavior that when your eyes were open, when the scales fell off your eyes, you wondered how you survived that lifestyle. I go back and I get scared thinking of some of the things that I did and thought that made perfectly good sense. 
But man's fallen condition yes, prevents him from hearing clearly. Consequently, we have learned how to ignore the knocking that we sense is going on in our spirit. Many of us, we held out long as we could until we finally answered the voice of Jesus as he was knocking on the door of our lives and we finally welcomed him into our lives. But for those of us who have continued ignoring the knocking. Uh, the text today informs us that the Savior is standing at the door of your heart. He's knocking. And he's awaiting an answer. You never get a question from God that you can duck. You never get a question from the master that can simply be ignored. He, he will just stand there awaiting an answer. I know there are some answers that took me 10, 12, 15 years to give to God, but he constantly waited to hear what I had to say. That, that, that's, that's one of the reasons I can say that, that, that I succumb to the call uh, to allow to be called a bishop. I ignored that knock for 20 years. But somehow God was patient enough to wait on me. Listen to what he says. He, he says uh, to the people at the church of Laodicea, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Behold is a word that says, you better check this out. Don't let this one get by you. This is important if you miss anything else. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Notice that the Lord's statement is in the present tense. My old uh, English teacher, Sister Mary Conrad. How I remember that lady's name. No, she wore me out. <laughs> she would say that, that the statement is in the continuous present tense, meaning it is a continuous, unceasing action. The eternal Christ, guess what, y'all? He's still there, knocking, not beating on the door, not banging on the door, but gently knocking on the door. He's knocking and his knocking tells us that he is seeking us out. We often very incorrectly say I found Christ one day. <clears throat> no. Christ was always there. He was there gently, patiently knocking on the door of your heart. He wasn't lost. We did not have to find Christ we did not have to search for him. He was always there asking us to open the door so that he may come in. This brief message is a word about salvation. It is a word about uh, uh, opportunity. It is a brief message that is a word to those who have not yet responded to the Savior's plea to those who have not yet opened their hearts and their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't come to be deep this morning. I, I didn't come to be theological or doctrinal. I come uh, to, to, to show somebody the way to salvation. I want to examine this familiar text found here in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. I want to carefully consider the knock. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. We, we, we know he's standing there. We know that there's a door. We know that there's Christ. But I, I want to look at the knock. I think what we'll see is that it is persistent, it is passionate, and it is powerful. Some knocks, we know what it sounds like. I know what it sounds like when my wife or a close friend or family member knocks on my door. Somehow I just kind of know and feel that I understand what's going on. I know the sound also of a stranger's knock. 
We all know the sound of the knock of the police on the door. We, we know what trouble sounds like when it knocks on our door. Over a lifetime, our, our ears have been trained to discern who is on the other side of the door when we hear the knock. But I want to help you today. I want to help you recognize that there is another knocking that we need to learn to both distinguish and respond to. You know the story about the, the, the people who had uh, uh, piling up bills and the bill collector knocked on the door and the mother said, go, go, to, go, go to the answer the door. Uh, and, and the little boy said, my mama told me to tell you she's not here. Uh, we, 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 we know how to distinguish the knock, but, but we also need to know how to respond to the knock. Very briefly, I want to preach to you about this subject, the knock. The knock. First of all, the Savior's knock is persistent. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, the A clause, the Savior says something that is very interesting. He says, behold, I stand at the door. Why is that interesting? Because did you ever stop to consider how close the Lord had to be in order to stand there knocking at your door? The Lord is always present. A knock on your door means that someone has taken the time. They had to offer the, alter their schedule, their itinerary, in order to come to where you are, in order to knock on your door. That says that there is never a time when the Lord is not near. Nor is there a time when the Savior does not know where you are. That's good news because sometimes the devil will try to make you think you all alone in your trouble. That everybody, including God, has forgotten all about you. That they don't even know that you're over here in the corner suffering in pain. Your life is not an unnoticed, meaningless existence. God is constantly aware of who you are and where you are. You know, I heard a preacher say that he wanted to sometime put his religion off, put his religion down so he could go somewhere and say, Lord, I'm all right. I, I, I'll be back. I'm going to go over here. You don't have to come with me. No, he always knows where we are. So much so that he is constantly knocking, trying to get you to invite him in. Come on, come on, the Lord is always knocking, but he's also always, always seeking. Jesus said in Luke chapter 19 verse 10 he said for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost in his parable in Luke chapter 15 Jesus tells us that the good shepherd will lead the 99 to go and seek out that one lost sheep that's because seeking is the Lord's ministry. He's always seeking. The Savior is not only uh, always seeking, but he's always present. Yes. Always knocking yes. as well as seeking. Then secondly, I need you to know that in addition to his knock being persistent, uh, the Savior's knock is passionate. Yes. It is a passionate plea. On, it is a plea from the one who wants to save you. The B clause uh, of verse 20 it says if anyone doesn't matter who you are where you come from if anyone hears my voice and opens the door that's the plea not only does the Lord knock but he pleads that's what he does he is not only knocking at the door but he's calling out to us when you're not sure if somebody's doorbell works, you begin knocking on the door, right? And just in case uh, the one on the inside uh, may not have heard your knocking or the doorbell, sometimes you find yourself yelling out, making sure that there is no doubt that you're out here. We used to live, we used to live near some neighbors, and this man's wife would put him out every weekend 
I remember the name Dorothy. He'd be on the, Dorothy, Dorothy, I'm out here. And Dorothy ain't moved. The question is, this is a mystery. Why does the Lord have to stand and why does he knock? Why does he not simply allow someone to open the door for the king? The Savior has every right to kick the door in and enter into your life. But the sovereign and all-powerful Jesus... He lowered himself, listen to me, he lowered himself to work out his eternal plan of salvation. And look how he did it, by pleading for our cooperation. He pleads for the cooperation of unworthy sinners like you and me. I'm going to break it down. According to, the, or to God's plan, the occupant... The one on the inside must open the door. Y'all heard the story about this painting, this famous painting of, of this verse of scripture where there's a door and the Lord is standing there knocking. But if you look closely at the painting, you will notice that there is no handle on the outside of the door, which suggests that it only must can be opened from the inside. The only one that can open the door to the Lord is you. And you must do it from within your heart. I need y'all to know that God's plan is for the occupant to open the door. He must repent of his self-sufficiency and his human wisdom. Uh, my friends, I need y'all to know that the Lord is calling and we need to hear his voice. Uh, the sinner must choose Christ. Mama can't choose Christ for you. The pastor can't choose. The sinner must choose Christ for him or herself. But it's all set in motion by a passionate plea from the master. By a persistent knock from the master. Finally, uh, we come to the greatest news of the text. Uh, and that is, the Savior's knock contains a powerful promise. Uh, he says, this is the promise. He says, if, you, if, if after I knock and you open, he says, I will come in to, to him and dine with him and he with me. Who do you know that ever went to your house for dinner and they wound up blessing you he says I will dine with him and he with me Jesus said if we open the door he will come into our hearts in John chapter 3 he calls that being born again I'm being elementary today nothing deep nothing heavyweight in, in John chapter 3 verse 3 Jesus answered and said to him most assuredly I say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God you don't open the door you don't see the kingdom you don't answer the master you will not be saved this is a promise he says I will come in and sup with him and he with me. This is a promise of provision. In other words, you will always have something to sustain you. Jesus said, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. When Jesus said dine with him, he spoke of a specific meal that the, that the Jews knew as deep none. The deep non, D-E-I-P-N-O-N, was the main meal of the day. Therefore, it was a leisurely affair. There was no rushing. It wasn't lunch to get back to work. It wasn't breakfast to get off the house. It was the last meal of the day. They laid back and relaxed. They were not in a hurry. Uh, this, this speaks of fellowship. 
I get, I get tired of people that come to church looking at their watch, <laughs> wondering how long is this going to last. How, they, they sang too long. He, he preached too long. No, the fellowship is a leisurely, enjoyable yes. encounter. Because this meal was at the end of the day, the partaker could spend quality time relaxing and enjoying good fellowship. Don't, don't, don't have your Sunday all scheduled out so that the preacher had to hurry up so that you can make your reservations. We need to have quality time of fellowship. And you guess what? Fellowship is not only with each other. He said, well, two or three are gathered. He said, I'm coming to that party. He said, I'll be in the mid. Matter of fact, I'm going to be in the middle of the fellowship. Christians should not get together unless they get together talking about the Lord. Amen. I know you want to talk about your favorite movies or you want to talk about what happened last week or your birthdays or what your kids are doing. But somewhere in there, the Lord. Yes, sir. If you have to talk about the grandkids, just say, well, the Lord blessed me. The, the fellowship is an inclusion of the Lord Jesus Christ. In a few moments, we're going to have fellowship. We're going to have a, a fellowship, and the Lord will be in the midst of that fellowship. That's why we're going to cut off Facebook when that time comes. That, that's an intimate family moment of fellowship. Uh, I, 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 can't, I can't speak for everybody on Facebook, but I, therefore I can't invite everybody. Amen. So it'll be our time of relaxed fellowship. That's, the, that's because the Savior is patient. The Savior is persistent. Because he wants to fellowship with you and me. And not just for the moment, but for an eternity. That's a great promise. It's a promise that there will be fellowship in the years to come on this side of glory. But there will be an eternal fellowship on the other side of heaven. There will be a fellowship that includes people who can't make it to, with this one today. But they will be included in the fellowship on the other side. Mom and daddy is going to be at the table. Loved ones that we said farewell to, they will be included in the fellowship. Why? Because there was a knock. There was a knock on the door. And, and, and speaking personally, it was a knock on my door. And, and, and one day I woke up and had enough sense to say yes. I didn't say who is it because I knew who it was. You know who's been knocking on your door. You know who's been worrying you in the midnight hour. You know the ones who's been warning you. And all you got to do is open the door. Notice he didn't say you had to say anything. He didn't say you had to be a certain way. Sometimes we won't go to the door because we're not appropriately dressed. Ladies say amen. amen. So we want to make sure that the makeup and the wig and, the, and all that is right. Before we go to the door. But he said all you got to do. Is open the door. I don't care who you been. I don't care where you, where you been. I don't care what you did. Open the door. And let me in. And guess what? Fellowship begins immediately. Don't you dare look down your nose. At a new saved creature. A newborn saint of God is just as eligible for the fellowship uh, as everybody else. Uh, a recovering addict who been born again is eligible for the fellowship. Uh, a drunk who's been cleaned up and sobered up is eligible for the fellowship. He said, come in and I will sup with you. That's the first part. He said, but the next part is going to last forever. He said, and then you will sup with me. And there will be no such thing as the overflow running out. Uh, there will be an overflow of the abundance of all that heaven has for you and me. 
the knock. When you hear the knock, respond. When you respond, do it in faith. Because it's a persistent knock. It's, it's a, a, a passionate plea of a knock. But it includes a promise. Yes, Father in heaven, I thank you for a, a, a patient Savior who knocks continuously, unceasingly on the door of our hearts. And then, Lord, this prayer is for those who have not yet answered. And responded to the plea from the master to open, to allow him in. For those of us, Lord, who have allowed you into our lives, Lord, you have full course of our lives. Unlike many of us, we've got places in our homes where visitors are not allowed. You could go here, but you can't go there. Don't go upstairs. Just stay right here. But Lord, you have full reign of our lives, our secret portions, our hidden places. All of that belongs to you, that we may enjoy eternal fellowship in the presence of a Savior who lowered himself enough to knock and plead for us to respond. Thank you, Lord. For your grace. Grace allowed us to open the door. And the Savior saved us. From our sins. Hear our cry today. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Praise God with your hands. Would you please. There's somebody listening. By Facebook watching. Or present today if you're not saved that's because you can't hear him knocking as you ought would you respond by saying yes to his knock he wants to save you from your sins he wants to save you from a life that you're living beneath your privileges your rank is high, but your living is low. And the Lord wants to elevate you to the level that he has brought you to by shedding his blood on the cross. And all we have to do is say yes, believing that he died on the cross for our sins. Believing that he will forgive us, cleanse us, and set us straight we may fellowship with him would you say yes today if you've said yes to this plea and responded to this sermon would you contact us at the church at our website and let us know that, that you were affected by this message and perhaps you may want to be a part of this fellowship we'd be happy to meet with you to talk with you bring you into this fellowship called New Calvary Baptist Church. We want to thank you for this time of worship. We want to thank all of those who have come to be with us. I know you all got quite comfortable. Would you stand right now so that I can pray over you? And then we will move into our communion service. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Every sinner plunged beneath that flood will lose all his guilt and stain. Lord God of heaven, may this be a message of warning, a message of opportunity to the lost. Hear our cry. We thank you for the privilege of worshiping you and sending forth the gospel message. Have your way in our lives, not only this day, but in the days to come. In the powerful name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let us all say amen, amen. and amen.
God bless you until the next time we're in worship together.